What's up you guys, you're watching Team APS. In today's video, I'm going to share my seven favorite past sort of old school Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Let's get started. So while making this list, I uh, tried to basically go with decks that were released before, like let's say 2012, 11-ish. Uh, I feel like anything past that still feels a little bit too recent to be like retro or a classic or an old school deck. But also, I started playing this game more or less competitively in like 2009. So most of these decks are from like kind of 2008, 08, 09 to like, I guess, 11, 2011. So kind of, that's the basis for this list. So we're gonna kick this one off with Light Swords. Um, I've actually complained a little bit about this deck in the past, so people might think I'm being a bit of a Benedict Arnold by including it in this list, but Light Swords are actually a deck that I have played and, and on multiple occasions. Um, I've had the deck built and enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, the thing I like about Light Swords, and you know, it's not relevant today really at all so much, but the thing I like about Light Swords is that the mill strategy actually felt extremely unique. We still, in my opinion, haven't gotten a deck that feels quite so, uh, so much like walking a tightrope as Light Swords do because, uh, the concept here is that you know you're using these monsters that are very powerful and they were made more powerful i think than a lot of monsters at the time you had things like lila um and you know wolf and raiko and like celestia and judgment dragon of course that had like powerful effects but they were counterbalanced by the fact that you were kind of on a clock as you played so you had to send cards from the top of your deck to the grave multiple cards every turn milling and um you know, getting good mills was sometimes beneficial. Like you wanted to get your light swords in the grave to set up JD and you wanted to be able to summon Wolf and now there's like new stuff like Bellus and things like that. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, you were still on a clock and I think that that actually made the deck feel super tense because it was like, you know, you had to win in a certain amount of time. And so I actually really liked that part of the deck. And also one really fun thing about playing this deck, especially kind of closer to when it was in its prime was if you ever had this deck like hollowed out with, you know, actually ultra or ultimate solar recharges and secret charge of life brigades secret jds and ghost honest oh my god <gasps> this deck felt like literally holding gold in your hands it was so much fun so yeah number seven is light swords so number six is black wings um this is actually a popular deck by a lot of people uh i actually didn't initially like black wings all that much i had a close friend who played black wings and was really good with them and he always beat me <laughs> so i got salty but then over time, um, I began to sort of enjoy playing the deck. I actually found that it fit my style pretty well. Uh, it's kind of got a, a little bit of flexibility in that it can like swarm and kind of OTK and make these powerful plays, at least, you know, during its time and make threaten your opponent. But it also just could be played in a very anti-meta style. Um, you had things like Sirocco that you could just summon with 2000 attack and sit on and protect with Collude and kind of just use cards like Acres attack to, you know, kind of two for two your opponent over and over and then just gradually summon synchro monsters you saw anti-meta things like gale as well and shura and just sort of like chess match it out with your opponent so i liked the variable play style i actually really like that blackwing still gets support today i feel like it's a weird archetype and that i always say that blackwings are going to outlive this game like itself because they always get random new support and most of it's pretty bad but um recently the the battle black wings or whatever they're called um combat black i don't know what they're called they actually are pretty useful and the stuff that came in that last gold series from the year before that was also pretty good so black wings made number six on my list number five is actually um grand soil psychics so this is one that is probably one of the more recent ish ones but um it's basically the psychic support that came out kind of in like i guess early 2012 with um grand soil the elemental lord so kind of breaking my rule here because this is stuff from 2012 but it played like such an old school deck and used some old school concepts so i kind of enjoyed it because of that um basically yeah you use grand soil the elemental lord which is you have to have five earth monsters and you summon it and then when you summon it you summon a monster from either player's grave and uh, you can drop like multiple grand souls per turn which is really great and then and this was all around the time when Psychic Monsters had recently gotten some pretty good support. Um, cards like Serene Psychic Witch and Hush Psychic Cleric, and they were all Earth, and so you could sort of toolbox with them and make synchros, and 
it was just a whole lot of fun. And then like people use cards like Card Trooper and Giant Rat um, to sort of set the grave up and you can use other earth monsters like uh, Neospace and Grand Mole. So really fun deck. It played to me just like a really great control sort of you could play defensively until you suddenly explode at the end of the game. And this was actually made popular by one of my favorite competitive players, Jeff Jones. I'm 99% sure it was him. He got like third place in some YCS and I was like, whoa, this deck is so cool. So uh, since then I've always liked Psychics. It's a deck I enjoyed playing. It's obscure, it kind of didn't get a whole lot of time in the limelight, but definitely one of my favorites. Next is Plants. Um, so Plants is, I know, a bit of a broad term. But I particularly like Gigavise, it was actually my favorite version of Plants, but I loved experimenting with all of the different versions of this deck as it, you know, just sort of became a thing. Uh, so I think the plant support started in like Crossroads of Chaos when we got Black Rose and a lot of other plant things, and then just sort of continued, but there had already been some things like Gigavise and Lone Fire and uh, stuff like that, stuff like Titanial came out, and then it just all sort of began to meld into this really cool plant deck. Plants were one of those decks that I always felt like had a lot of potential. They had a lot of problems, they could like break a little bit, but there was so much potential to kind of turn into whatever you wanted because you had all these cards like Violet Witch and Lord Poison if you wanted to play a slow toolbox strategy and then you got things like Spore and eventually Glow Up Bulb and it all worked with, you know, like Debris Dragon and Junk Synchron and it got to the point where like plants were such a fun combo strategy. Like I said, Gigavise ended up being my favorite version of this deck. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to play now because Future Fusion's gone, so no more like Super Alloy Beast Raptorness for quick setups and everything. But uh, regardless, it does hold a special place in my heart. In fact, one of the very earliest videos on this channel, like maybe the second or third video, I don't know, is actually a Gigavise deck profile. I think that's all still up. So if you want to uh, travel down the rabbit hole of Team APS, you can actually find my original build of Gigabytes. It's probably horrible, but that's okay. Next up is Light Hero Gemini Beat, whatever you want to call this. Uh, this was the deck that basically used Elemental Hero, Neos Alias, Gemini Spark, um, and actually usually included things like Crusader of Endymion, which was another like light Gemini monster that you could use Gem Spark with. And you just ran Rhoda and Eagle and, um, Miracle Fusion. It was just the definition of a beat sticky stun deck. Um, not a, I, I actually, to funny story, today I really don't like that deck very much at all. I hate the, the slow, grindy, simple linear play style. It doesn't feel like I'm involved enough, but um, compared to what I think Heroes have become, where it's just like Dark Law Turbo, I actually enjoy this a little bit more. Um, it was popular in, it was actually popular for like several formats. It was popular from like 2000 to like late 2010 or something like 2011 and all the way through like 2012 and 13 like it the decks always stayed relevant to varying degrees so um i actually really liked it for that purpose it was in some ways cheap in some ways expensive like before honest got reprinted i remember that was kind of an issue to get a hold of and some other certain cards um like the shining when it was first released but um when you had the deck together it was this nice fun simple deck to play you could add your other anti-meta cards like royal oppression <laughs> god that powerful thing and this it was actually just a whole lot of fun to play. So uh, Light and Hero Beat actually takes my number three spot. Number two is going to go to Gladiator Beasts. Um, this is, wow, I really love this deck. Funny story, the same guy who played Black Wings um, also played Gladiator Beasts, also beat my ass with them a lot, and also inspired me to try them out myself, and I ended up loving them. Um, shout outs to you, his name is Chris. Not the same Chris who's in some recent videos, but Anyway, he'll know who he is if he's watching this video, so shout outs to him. Yeah, uh, Gladiator Beasts are... <sighs> I really like this deck. Uh, it actually could have easily been my number one spot. I like the the fact... The, the way it played felt very unique to me. I liked that it was all about just battle protection and getting in those successful attacks, and when you got in those successful attacks, you just bounce back and just summon the different Glad for a different situation. You could pop stuff from the middle of Bestiari and recycle stuff with quest and set up plays with like Darius and just or just wall out with a like Hoplomus or you know apply pressure with Aquari and <sighs> the deck is so much fun and then like you know there were all the things like Test Tiger, Prisma Glads and you can make like Geysaris or you know you recycle Cherry and just control with that and then like drop Herc for game. It, this deck got me so excited. I actually played so many different varieties of this deck when I had all the cards I would just we did try out different spell and trap combinations, enemy controller and shrinks and book of moon and like random just spells and traps I found even when the deck began to get dated and I would still just try to try out things like forbidden lance and safe zone and 
all these fun things. I made like a version of it that was like super heavy on the counter traps. Like I uh, had the triple chariot and I had like seven tools and solemn morning and dark bribe and like all of this. Like, I just I just liked playing with the deck and just seeing how the spells and traps interact with the monsters and just made it all feel super powerful. I really enjoyed it. I think it's one of the only decks that. Uh, I mean, there are other decks I took to regionals, but it was the deck that I think I did the best, or maybe like second best at a regional with, so that was a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, yeah, Gladiator Beasts, uh, they're number two, but you guys all know what number one is. My favorite old school deck of all time, and if you have been watching this channel for any amount of time, you probably know this, is X Sabers. So uh, let's talk about these for a little bit. X Sabers. <laughs> like some of the other decks in this list, I didn't really care for them when they were in their prime. I actually got into the deck a bit later than that. Uh, I So I was actually never around really for the Rescue Cat, Summoner Monk, uh, Cold Wave era of this deck. So that's actually kind of a little bit of trivia. But I would love for those cards to all come back. I still kind of enjoy the idea of playing x Sabers like that. But x Sabers to me, I don't know exactly what it even is that makes me like them so much. It's just a combination of things, really. The fact that you can play defensively with Emmer's Blade and Dark Soul and just wait your opponent out and just grab resources. The fact that you can suddenly explode with things like Ball Troll and Ragigura and loop your opponent's hand. The fact that you can make literally every synchro monster in your extra deck. And just, I guess, the overall simple fact of the matter is it's such a fun deck to win with. It feels so satisfying because Fun fact about the X Sabers, they they don't actually support each other all that much. Most of them are just random monsters with random effects that aren't particularly useful, like Full Helm Knight and Pashul and all these random things, a Palomero that don't really have super great synergy, but somehow they come together to make this really powerful and like pretty consistent and pretty, you know, just good synchro strategy. And when you win, it always kind of feels like you outplayed your opponent. Like there's always a way to win, you just have to find it. It's a struggle, it's an uphill battle, but it's there. And one more fun fact about X Sabers, um, my favorite matchup to ever play with X Sabers was actually against um, September 2013 Dragon Rulers. I know that's the weirdest matchup to enjoy because most people hated facing that deck, but deceptively, like low key, X Sabers had a winnable matchup against that deck. I, I'm not saying it was like in X Sabers' favor. I wouldn't even say it's like 50-50, but it was so fun because like if you had your deck built properly and you played a very specific, meticulous way, you could actually beat Dragon Rulers with their three Draco sacks, with their three big eyes, with their 12 adult dragons, and their return for the different dimension. You could actually beat them. That was so much fun. That was the most exhilarating matchup in the world. It was so much fun. So, um, anyway. Uh, I got a little carried away there. So, those are my seven favorite classic retro old school decks by my classic retro old school standards. They're older decks that I'm sure you guys can mention. What are your favorites, speaking of that? Uh, leave them in the comments, I'd love to know um, and why. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Um, if you want, you can buy a Team APS playmat, link to it down in the description. And that's gonna be all, so I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.